You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, Oopsie. good morning, <laughs> and hello, kids. We do all our own stunts here at the Beaver Lodge. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and uh, see, we're already off the rails. Great start, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Season three and episode number, uh, I'm going to guess 196 today of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day. I like to have to have that little yeah in there. <laughs> today, recording day is Tuesday, I'm going to guess. Again, I- I'm I'm just in a bubble of happiness right now, kids, So um, from the weekend. So um, time is basically um, optional as a concept uh, <laughs> for me at the moment. I'm in a happy spot. Uh, so I'm going to say Tuesday, August 29th, 2023. And uh, I think it's going to be a very nice day here at the Beaver Lodge. Uh, temperature is going to feel up to 28, but... That's just the feel. The base temperature will still be okay uh, with maybe just a little touch of rain at some point during the day to freshen things up. But uh, it's currently 13 hey, well, here. Oh, really? Yeah, it's chilly. It's it's Ooh, the okay. uh, it's that time of the year when you wear a jacket to work and you carry it home. I yes. hate that. <laughs> Which, which 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 I learned this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. There was a um, one evening. Uh, one moment I was there, I could um, describe the weather as nipply. Yeah, that was Saturday night. It was I. I had to wear a wool wool jacket. Like, it was not. Huh. Yeah. Ooh, um, all right. I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And with me as always, as you can hear, is my dear friend, Mr. Grizzly. Of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Peppermaster, The Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Mood Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a Tuesday morning nibble for you. But before we do anything else, the most important thing we do here every day at the Beaver Lodge is say hello to you, Mr. Grizzly, and ask you, how's your mental health doing today? 
Well, good morning, Mr. Beaver. Uh, mental health-wise, uh, it's a very good question. Uh, my allergies are kicking my butt right now. And if anybody <laughs> witnessed my very brief ASMR show last night, I, I was only on for about 10 minutes. I had a, a vicious sinus headache and borderline migraine. It just felt like crap. Still feeling a little crappy today. Went to bed at 10 o'clock. Woke up at 6.30 this morning. Just, I'm just, physically, I'm, I'm, I think I'm still probably recovering for the week, from the weekend for, for, you know, a little bit. It was a very busy weekend for me too, don't forget. Oh, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, ragweed season is, oh. is uh, giving me a good punch to the gut right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm yep. off. Uh, I got to admit, I'm feeling it too. Uh, I'm surprisingly chipper uh, considering uh, my beaver sweetie started, <sighs> who I love with all my heart. I love with all my heart. Remind yourself you love with all your heart. Started snoring at 4 a.m. in the morning. I did not get back. To, I did not get back to sleep. Apparently, um, I was but, snoring at around the same time. Yeah. So uh, for uh, me, however, um, um, let's just say yes, being fabulous and being fierce uh, for an entire weekend, uh, even though it does come naturally, it is very hard work. And when you're being fabulous, fabulous and fierce for an entire weekend at fifty, you kind of feel it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <clears throat> yeah, uh, but um, it was uh, a really fun time. And uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that I promised the kitties some goodies. Oh, you got some video, do you? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I uploaded <laughs> it. Uh, okay, let's see. Maybe it's hidden under replies for some reason. Okay, that is very strange. Send it to I don't. if you send it to me via Twitter DM, I can usually play it that way. Well, yeah, the thing is, is that the posting to Twitter that I did of it seems to have vanished from Twitter. Well, I didn't, maybe that's why we call it X. <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah, because it X okay, that was very weird. On its own. Oh, hold on, let's try that. Maybe that'll work. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that may have done it. If I refresh that way. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Haha. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, of course, um, just a couple of seconds. Because, wow. <laughs> For some reason, it will not enlarge. Elon, stop fucking with my show. Okay. <laughs> mm. You heard that. God. I swear, man. I mean you no harm. I just want benign neglect, man. Just let us do our business. Benign neglect. All right. <laughs> I, I wish you no harm. I wish you no... <laughs> I don't wish you well. I don't wish you ill. Okay, just, here we go. Got some just let me do there. business. All right. There's no sound. So, uh, I'm gonna, whoa, my God. Yeah, that, that was me hanging out so, the golf cart, yelling stuff. Hanging out the golf cart. Now, uh, unfortunately, kids, I would have loved to have gotten more, but as I mentioned, I think the other day on, the, I was saw him coming, and I got on the street corner, and my brand new, brand new camera. So I, I pressed the button. Didn't work. And then I looked, and I go, "Where's the video?" And I'd taken a picture instead. So I had to haul tail. <laughs> <laughs> two blocks to get ahead of it just to get those 10 seconds. Yeah, that was right towards the end of it, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's after having walked the walked from home to the parade and walking the entire parade. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. But, hey, again, we do our own stunts and we go the extra mile. Oh, and I definitely yeah. did that on Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you you got the um, the lobster marks <laughs> to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> to prove it. Yeah. Oh my! Uh, and then, um, of course, 
um, over the course of the weekend, you know, when you are being fabulous, oh, talk about being fabulous, um, right here, Mr. Grizzly. Mm. This made me happy. Oh, Faye Johnston, yeah. Right she there. was uh, the parade grand marshal, I believe, eh? I believe so, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it says right here, we have been hated before, we have been targeted before, we have been here before, we won then, we will win now. If the far right and their friends in public office want to start a culture war on 2S LGBTQIA plus issues, we will rise to the challenge and we will win. Yes, sister. You know something interesting? Something that you might not be aware of. The um, So the reason that it, it, it occurs on around August 27th, 28th, is because the very first uh, protest in, held in Canada was August uh, 27th, 1970 or 71. Uh, I think it was 70. Anyway, they had a list called We Demand, yeah. and it was 10, demand. 10 items that they demanded. And Oh, yeah, but by the way, all those 10 demands have been met. A long time ago, actually, quite a number of years ago, and and mm -hmm. and then some, by the way, and then some, because they weren't even calling for same-sex marriage to be recognized at the time because they thought it wasn't even a possibility. So, uh, not to mention that the spousal supports for for, uh, you know, at, at one point in time you could be seen as common law because it wasn't wasn't a le legal thing at the time, but the spousal supports for common law partners were recognized along with, of course, same-sex marriage. And, and I, for the longest time, I, I couldn't understand when I was much, much younger. And this is, this is sort of a, a, a confession, if you will. But when I was much, much younger, I couldn't understand, like, what gay rights? You have the same rights as I do. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the spousal supports, the, 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 you know, my, my, my partner is sick in the hospital. Sorry, only next of kin. Or, or, or um, a spouse. Well, mm -hmm. it wasn't legal to be that at the time. Or, or in the will, for, for example, if you had been living together and you had a house yep. and one was living in the other person's house, if you didn't have the will and all that kind of stuff and you didn't do some uh, like really weird things like buying a house as joint co-tenancy. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like if you did anything else, then the other person's family could just say, uh, yeah, we, we understand you just uh, lost the person you just spent 32 years of your life with, but uh, we don't care. Get the fuck out. Yeah. This is our house yeah. now. So, you know, all those things have changed, thank goodness, because no freedom till we're equal, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, kids, <clears throat> because it was Capital Pride, mm -hmm. and we know the kids and the cubs demand fashion. They demand it. Well, Queen Beaver definitely had some outfits. Um, two, because what would be a good queen without having a costume change? <laughs> so this first, inspired by Danielle Smith. Wait, what? Remember Danielle Smith took that picture soon after she became premier or something like that, where oh, okay. just her legs. Yes, right. Yeah. Okay. I thought to, I'm like <laughs> yellow socks, Danielle Smith. I didn't. So this year's Capital Pride Weekend outfit, serving up booty shorted bumblebee jock realness and pose. Click. <laughs> hey baby, how you doing? <laughs> Suck the gut in. You look good. You look pretty trim in that photo, sir. And you got look at the, yeah, you got some soccer you, tennis, legs hey? going on there. Thank you, tennis. Yeah. My legs are rocking this oh, year. Yeah. Woo! -hoo, I got the games. Uh, and then, of course, kits. That was the afternoon ensemble, of course, because then we had to go out and dance. So we have to have the soirée ensemble. So. While the day was bumblebee or sunshine, mm -hmm. um, for the evening, I went a little more Canada. Uh, a variation on the theme, but slight difference. We changed the shirt, we changed the socks, but of course we kept the booty shorts and the legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Fashion darling. And of course... Um, 
since we have a, a little video of you, uh, we also have, whoops, sorry, a little video of me uh, because um, you were playing music, which is your jam, and I was boogieing down to it, which is my jam. So 15 seconds of just utter joy for you kids to get your day started. Here we go. Here's the drop. <sighs> I always love it when you wait for the drop and it hits. Mm -hmm. ah. Oh, and later that evening, uh, that DJ that you talked about last year who spins and sings at the same time? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm drawing a blank right Duperval? now. Sandy Duperval. Sandy Duperval was spinning. Oh, was she? She's amazing. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. Mind. Yeah, I, I, first time I saw her was years ago at Globe Fair, and I was like, oh, my God, she's incredible. She is nuts. Oh, yeah, yeah. She'll come out and sing Show Not. Me Love, just play the instrumental and then actually do the live vocals. She's incredible. Well, that's the clip that we showed that you had from that time. Uh, no, absolutely. Whoa. Well, uh, Kid James. Send me that outfit. Oh, oh, oh my God. Don't ask any Send questions. Send me that outfit and don't ask any questions. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Oof, those legs. Well, thank you, Kit Lance. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, flattery will get you many, many, many places with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Kit Jen, uh, impeccable turnout. Uh, like I said, uh, it really does seem like uh, someone put out the memo. Is it, you know, allies, everyone come out. Uh, come out, ha, huh, uh, this weekend. <laughs> to, and... Uh, the people responded. So, um, again, uh, I'm just in this bubble of love. We got home, uh, yesterday, uh, at, uh, eight in the evening and just had a nice relaxing evening and, um, went to sleep with a smile on my face and woke up with a smile on my face. So nothing but love. Um, impossibly tiny shorts, <laughs> says Kitlin to him. And I'm sort of like the, well, uh, I guess fabulous Stephen Lecce because I call Stephen Lecce the minister of uncomfortably tight pants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would be the minister of impossibly tiny shorts if ever I was elected. Yes, Linda. I'll be the speed minister. <laughs> if I was doing a show about me being, oh, there goes the minister of impossibly tiny shorts again. There goes Just Speedo waving man. those legs around. Speedo man in tiny <laughs> shorts. Speedo man in tiny shorts. <laughs> it's a new superhero uh, duo. Speedo Man in tiny shorts. Hey, Speedo Man, what problems are we going to solve today? Today we're going to fix the world and rid the, rid the world of all the bad people. We're going to send them oh. off to the netherworld. Oh, and do we get to impart civics along the way? You're damn right we do. You're damn Yay. right. Speedo oh, man in tiny shorts. Uh, somebody's got to. Somebody's got to create that. DaCosta, if you're on the ball, man, make it happen. Speedo man in tiny shorts. <laughs> just don't make me look just like. Go ahead and create caricatures and comic books, but don't make me look like some pumped up He Man. You know what I mean? Well, no, you're Speedo man. You have to have the classic summers. Well, I'll be ripped, but I don't want to be. You'll have broad shoulders. Yeah, yeah. I already have like that. that. Just, just make me look yeah. like I look. Don't, don't. I don't want to be, you know, some giant behemoth. You know. Yeah, just, but I mean, Speedo man has to swim butterfly. Well, I'm more of a breast stroker, but yeah, I'll do butterfly for the. <laughs> but I'm. For, for the. You know, that was an accidental pun on my part. <laughs> I know. I love accidental humor. I didn't even recognize it when I said it. No, I'm more of a breaststroker myself. But, uh, it makes sense that I always got disqualified in the breaststroke portion of the I am. <laughs> uh, sir, that's not how we do it. What are you talking about? What, what are you talking about? It's not like that. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to hell. Well, you know, that'd be good company there. 
Speedo Man, oh, Speedo Man does whatever a Speedo Man can. <laughs> uh, I'm going through the, uh, you know what? <clears throat> Somebody said that they love the romper room section. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have a mirror yet. You got to get but, you one. Um, um, we'll use a glass. I see Kit Jillian and Kit Wishful Son. And Kit Linda M. and Kit James and Kit Caper. That's a new name for us. Good welcome to, welcome you. to the party. And Kit Ellen. Yes. And uh, let's see. Kit Smithsedeka and Kit. Oh, Kendra. Nope. I believe we've seen that name before. Uh, welcome. It's been a while, I think. And let's see. Kit uh, Mademoiselle Fox. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. And who else? Kit Saucy. Wow, everybody's here today. Oh, Kit MK. That seems to be a new name for us as well. Welcome to the Beaver Lodge. Uh, Kit Lance Anderson Croft. Yes, that sounds wonderful. Welcome, welcome. Kit Mohan. Oh, lovely to see you. And hello to the whole family. By the way, uh, Jazzy Rain and uh, Mateo. And uh, oh, yes. Did you get that thing from Mateo that I sent you? When did you send it? How did you send it? Uh, Twitter DM, no. the cutest thing. I don't yes, think so. yes, we might have a surprise uh, later on. Um, let's see. Oh what no, else? I tried it. I is... tried to look at it, and all it does is it just it it didn't work. Whatever you sent me, it didn't work. It just okay, keeps taking then, me back to messages. Okay, then I'll have to do it from my end when uh, when the opportunity comes along. I think that's everyone. Thank you for joining us. All right. Ah, now that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Still in a good mood. Uh, we'll bring you um, some stuff that's maybe not so good. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, I don't know. You know. Ugh. Okay. So okay. Um, we got. Some, some, I got. I got. I got something. I gotta. Uh, this is just bizarre. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is. Um, You've heard of the Save the Children convoy, which has oh, nothing yeah, the, to do with the, the convoy that doesn't know what they're saving the children from. And they have nothing actually. to do with the Save the Children Foundation, which is a legitimate thing that's been around for right. over 100 years and, right. and helps kids around the planet. Yes, I, that's, a little deliberate confusion with the name. Exactly. There. That's a charity I donate yeah. to every month, by the way. Not that I'm looking for a pat on the back, but it's a good charity. I, I I chose to donate to them because mm-hmm. they do good work. So this is Jeremy from the upcoming Save the Children Convoy. And, well, let's just watch this 36-second clip of him on the Twitter. And uh, you just draw your own conclusions from what he has to say, okay? Because it's, uh, it's yeah. From what I can see, we've still got 70% of our awake people thinking they're going to vote their way out of this. Meanwhile, they're shooting laser beams out of the fucking sky, obliterating you. This is not a lockdown. This is a transformation of the world. This is not a lockdown, folks. It is a transformation. While they're literally shooting lasers out of the sky, destroying cities. RCMP have been here twice this month for uh, wellness checks, so. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, there's Uh, a reason the RCMP are doing wellness checks. Yikes. uh, Yeah, okay. (laughs) Getting out my rake. Oh, kid, I'm gay. <laughs> you can stay. <laughs> the disturbing part is there are people who actually believe that. They, they actually believe that. It's like, so you, I don't know if anybody saw the video of the Chinese space lasers over Hawaii that caused the fires in Hawaii. That's not what happened. And the video that they showed you was 10 years old. <laughs> and it was part of a mapping system. And the laser beams they fired were not necessarily visible to the naked eye because they were at an ultraviolet rate. So not nearly powerful enough to to light a piece of paper on fire, let alone cause a match to go up. It, they were not burning down Maui by Chinese space lasers, okay? It was part of a mapping program, and that was from 10 years ago. Uh. Oh, kidney strength. Yeah, I know. Look, 
I love a good conspiracy theory just as much as the next fella, right? For the sheer enjoyment and pleasure of the, of the fiction of it. Because 99 out of 100 times, 99.9% of the time, it is absolute garbage. It's gibberish. It's fantasy. Oh, yeah. Some things have a little bit of basis in reality, and then they bend it, and, you know, like Pizzagate. Yeah, they're running a pedophile ring out of the basement of this pizza place. You mean the pizza place that doesn't have a basement? That one? That one? Yeah. <sighs> Exasperated all, right. all the damn time. <laughs> Every damn day. <laughs> All right, a little bit of an uh, update here uh, about forest fires for our friends uh, who are wondering or want additional information. Uh, Officials in Yellowknife say that the fire is now held and should remain that way unless weather conditions change. Uh, But before people come home, there are several key steps. Not only does the wildfire have to remain under control, but the plan includes checking for damaged infrastructure, bringing back essential workers, reopening the hospital, resupplying gas stations and grocery stores, that kind of stuff. Uh, Jay Bost, the Territorial Emergency Management Organization Information Officer, says, reality is you can't come home to community without services in place. Please know that when it happens, it won't happen instantly. When we come back, we won't all come back at once, but we will come back the right way. Mm. Uh, The fire threatening Hay River on the south shore of the Great Slave Lake is not yet contained. The firefighters there uh, are going to face another day of record heat with temperatures as high as 30. Uh, But uh, the good news is that the winds are expected to blow from the north and the northeast, which means that the fire will push back on itself and it'll give crews a chance to get some work done there. Ah, Kid Pete. Hey, how you doing, mate? What's up, brother? Nice to see you this morning. Thanks for dropping in. Um, so just, uh, some notes, uh, there for you. Um, there's a little uh, attempt at Scandalette, uh, because it seems that, uh, the new minister of small business, Rishi Valdez was in PEI and, uh, she decided that, uh, she would have some mussels and lobster and oh, stuff. Yeah, and people freaked out about people that. People decided to lose their mind. Um, because she ate that's part of the local job. cultural dishes. Is it, and why did people lose their mind? She ate locally, local cuisine. That's her job. <laughs> there's a minister of tourism, but there's a minister of small business. And most tourism in Canada is small business. Yeah. She's doing her job. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, there is um, a lot of need for counter programming. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Have you, did you see this? Did you see this? I got to show you this. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna just shake your head because that's what I did. I'll put this on the screen for you. This is more uh, Pierre Polyev uh, propaganda. Let me just start with the right clip, and then we'll backtrack. So maybe maybe you folks saw this over the weekend. Pierre Polyev. House shopping yep. after eight years of Trudeau and the NDP. Young people in Canada looking for a nice one-bedroom, zero-bath star okay. home. And they're looking... Before you click that, ten, before you click ten, as soon as I saw that, my pass. first thought was there's nobody's tragedy this man will not exploit. Well, yeah, exactly. Right. And, and this for yucky, yuck, yuck, yucks. Yeah, he did this for joke. He did this, you know, to make fun of Trudeau and, and, and have a laugh at the same time. Well, let's just backtrack one, one photograph, shall we? 19 homeless camp, Portland, Oregon, stock. What? Oh, that's from Portland, Oregon. And he photoshopped a couple in there. Wow. Shades of Melissa Lanceman. So it appears Polly got his visual of the Canadian tent city, a.k.a. millennial yumpy starter home from a stock photo site. It's not even Canadian. It's Portland, Oregon. Not only is his messaging the kind of mockery to come from a sadistic sociopath, it's a lie. Uh, you got to share that with me. That's going up on the Twitter feed. I didn't see that one. Uh, anything. Literally. They will say anything, anything, yeah. anything. So we've got Doug Ford, who's divvied up land to give $8.3 billion, and we're supposed to just move over that, but we are supposed to get pissed off. 
that Mr. Rishi Valdez dared to eat lobster and get caught on camera doing it Having a meal. while doing her job. Um, well, um, Mr. Grizzly, what, what, what was PP doing for the country around that time? Oh, um, yeah, let's see. Polyev threw a swanky garden party for dozens of CPC guests at Stornoway with an open bar. Pierre and Wifey were dancing the night away carefree in the middle of an affordability crisis. There may have been lobster served. Horrors. Was this expensive event a bad idea? That's a lot of people. Pot, introduce yourself to the cattle. Like that's a that's a lot of money. I'm not even going to shit on him for it. Okay, he's doing his job. But why is the media only pointing out one person doing their job and shitting on them for it? When he does his job, they act like it's just business as usual. But here, CTV. The Minister of Small Business in hot water after a lobster lunch. Rishi Valdez is being called tone deaf for posting a video of herself eating lobster and oysters and PEI. Sorry, not mussels, oysters. In the middle of an affordability crisis. Was the video a bad idea? <laughs> Come on, is it, Where, who, is anybody... Uh, like, come on, man. <laughs> and that's how you know which way the press leans. Yeah. It's pretty bloody obvious. We've got $8.3 billion, Doug Ford. Mm -hmm. We still got nobody asking questions well, about Mike Ronan. It, 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 nobody's talked about Mike Roman. You are correct. But we're supposed to get upset about Rishi Valdez. But did you see last week when Doug was confronted with the question about, is this a, is this a criminal conspiracy to uh, steal lands from, you know, Ontarians? He was questioned that, and, oh, he just didn't answer any of it. He goes, I know. That's oh, a very mean, on nasty yeah. question. Uh, yeah, the nasty question, yes. Yeah. The, another way that the Republican governor of the state of Ontario... Mm -hmm is becoming Trump. like Trump. Who else calls people nasty? Yep. This, the mob boss, the language, the bumbling persona, calling people nasty. Come on. Come on. <sighs> we, know, we know where this road leads. He's being investigated, potentially. Well. Like, <laughs> I just... <laughs> here, here we go. Look, at you know, I again, no, we know they're all greasy or almost all mm. but for listening to David Wallace. Oh yeah. But come on. Well, come on. This, 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 <laughs> this, 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 this is Doug Ford just the other day. Yeah. Was that look again? Well, actually, I'm going to totally disagree because that's that's not accurate. 25 years to have full service for housing development on the Dufferin's Range. Uh, any of these Rouge lands are right Rouge. beside serviceable lands. No, so on not. one side of the street, there's a community. They're not on serviceable lands, Doug. They're not. We know this. It'll take 25 years to develop that. On the other side of the street, there's an empty field. <laughs> beside other Greenbelt land. Yep. Past, yes. Right? There's urgency mm -hmm. to it, but the AG's report found that a lot of the land that was chosen to be taken out isn't ready for development. The chief planners in York, Durham, and Hamilton said it could take years to make it ready. So if all of the land in the Green Belt, the 600 applications that have been made since 2005, why those 15 pieces uh, chosen when they didn't meet the criteria, well, the criteria were changed throughout this okay. process, and they're not ready for development. Well, again, I'm going to respectfully disagree. The the water's there, the electricity's there. No, on one side not. of the street, there's homes. The other side, uh, there isn't. 
It is next to other protected land. But our number one goal is to build homes. That's what I mean. They literally will say anything because they know that the fact check will not get as many views. No, it won't. Well, this I love this photo. You gotta, I'll put this photograph on the screen in just a second. I'm just going to save it so you can see it. It's, it really sums up the Ford government. It's a well. It's just it's of beauty, is what it is. When you see this, you're, you'll be like, yes, there's somebody just as exasperated as I am. Let's see if this is Robert Benzie. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, who has just got a, a, a complete look of exasperation on his face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's he Robert just, Benzie. Yeah, he just asked him a question, and then Doug just lied right to his face. And you can tell Benji's pissed. Yeah, that's a that's a, a, WT, a WTF with girl. What the hell are you doing, Jacer? Yep. Oh, yeah. Matt, he is unimpressed. Well, it's because the it just blatantly lies to her face and continues to get away with it. Yeah, just just disagree with the premise. I disagree with the premise. I disagree with the question. I disagree with your framing. I disagree. Like it doesn't matter. You can disagree all you want. <laughs> Go ahead and disagree. It's still true. But that that's the thing is that it's almost like somebody needs to. <sighs> I don't know how you could be a journalist because and like turn around and it's like, no, that's not true. That's bordering on the other land. You know, when I mean, if you know, you know, but I mean, mm -hmm. somebody like listened to that, did the fact check afterwards and then went to see. Now, I guess if you could go back and it would be really nice if some journalists saw this. Well, I don't know if you've and noticed. And then took this and said, now, yesterday you said this, but the fact is this. So why did you say that if it's not true? Well, they keep trying to frame the 14 recommendations, and I keep calling them out every time they say it. There's 15, Doug. Stop trying to gaslight us into 14. There's 15 recommendations. You know this. You are purposely omitting one of them so you can gaslight us into thinking there's only 14. It's just so blatant. They started with their first press conference, and now they're doubling down on the 14 recommendations. There's 15 not 14, and the 15th one was none of this shit works out correctly because you did it wrong, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Do it over. Do it over. <sighs> oh, man. Those people, those people, those people. Um, shit. <laughs> he's just, he's, this guy's exasperating me. There's... The, Fortunately, there seems to be there's a certain core of journalists in Ontario that seem to be um, really interested in seeing this story through. Yeah. So even though there is a lot of counter programming, a lot of people, hello, Brian and Lori, I'm looking at you running interference uh, and trying to change the narrative and all these attempts at counter programming, it seems that there is a core of journalists where I don't know if we have a Pulitzer equivalent here, but <laughs> that this might be the story that's going to get them it. So uh, they are digging. So we are we are, we are getting some some good journalism that's getting through. But the problem is, is that once we get uh, some of that, it's to try to get uh, the main networks to pick them up and run with them, and that's not going to happen unless it's very, 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 very obvious that a downfall is coming, and that they, they don't want to be on the wrong side of it. But no, 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 we covered it. We covered it, started covering it like about two weeks before it happened, but we covered it. <laughs> <laughs> Best tweet of the day, 7.39 a.m. today. Doug Ford is the fat Tony of Mayor Quimby's. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> nice Simpsons reference. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, I like man. That. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, all right. Uh, a little bit of uh, stateside here. Uh, it seems that there is a second person that has demanded a speedy trial in the Georgia case. Uh, Sydney released the Kraken Powell. <laughs> I can't. 
<laughs> Sorry, she just makes me laugh. Um, apparently, her last, her middle name is Catherine and not Kraken. Oh well, <laughs> close enough though. Um, she also demanded uh, a speedy trial, so it looks like uh, she too will uh, start on October twenty uh, third, I believe it is. Um, now, I was wondering if this might have been a strategy by some Trump loyalists, maybe to try to get some information out early in these earlier trials that Trump's lawyers can then, then take and try to respond. But it seems that uh, when you move uh, the trial day up, it's actually uh, in the interest of the person who is doing it because they get to be the first to point fingers. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's say right now there is 19, uh, one, uh, is, uh, one was still in jail, I think, because I think they refused to comply with certain order of the bail. Uh, everybody else did. Um, and, uh, two have demanded a speedier trial. And what happens in the speedy trial is that, uh, they often, uh, point the finger at the empty chairs. Well, there were 17 other people in the conspiracy. This person maybe do that, or this person did that, or, well, this guy was a constitutional lawyer, so, I mean, why would I think he would tell? You know, I was deceived like everybody else, right? Um, the other thing is that unless Trump himself asks to move his trial up, which is the last thing he wants to do, because he kind of proposed never as a trial date, um... That means his lawyers are not in that courtroom. So any incriminating statements that either Mark Meadows or uh, Sidney Powell, I think Powell's her last name, I might be, I can't, I can't remember, remember right off the top of my head now. Um, yeah, but any statements that they make that incriminate him, well, in this meeting, Donald Trump told me to do this, this, this. Uh, Trump has no lawyers there to rebut that. And certainly the prosecution isn't going to say that there's, I contest that. Mm. Uh, so those are going to stand and be on the record. Now, the one advantage uh, for um, that's for just moving the date up uh, for the guy who's trying to move his case up to federal court. Um, it will still be tried under state laws. That's Mark Meadows, his former chief of staff, who's trying to present the argument that all the criming he did in this case, he was doing as chief of staff as part of his duties, which won't fly, but he is uh, trying to do that. Um, the advantage for him doing that is that because it will be held in a federal court, it uh, wouldn't be televised. Right. And would be held in another jurisdiction, so maybe a more favorable jury. Um, but it would still be state laws and state sentences that it would just be taking place in a federal court. Um, I would be surprised if he gets it. Well, it, and Trump's Trump's trial has been moved to what March twenty twenty four. Well, yes, in the the DC case, right. which is uh, because the, this one's the Georgia case mm-hmm. in the D, DC case, uh, which is the one he said, uh, "How about April?" But not April 2024. You want it in 2026. Not 2025. 2026. 2026. Yeah. No. Seven months, per, seven months before midterms. Yeah, well, it's already been four years since the crime was committed. Almost, well, three three plus years, right? Almost four years since the crime yeah. was committed. So he's, you know, he wants to wait another two, three. Hey, Judge, listen, listen here. I'm already 75, 76, something like that. Why don't we just wait till I die? Then. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me seven more years of freedom. <laughs> Jeez. Christ. Um, so, yeah, that one uh, for the D.C. court is, uh, has been set for March uh, 4th, I think it is, 2024, uh, which is the exact same month where his New York uh, tax trial, I believe it is, is also going to be taking place. So two trials, one month. Yay, you got to have a busy March. Uh, and I believe that uh, March trial is literally the day before the Super Tuesday primary. <laughs> so the day before everybody votes, he can't actually campaign because he'll his ass will be in court. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
seem to have a little evil in me. <clears throat> ah, I love black women. <laughs> oh, speaking of, um, uh, apparently the prime minister made a surprise drop in at uh, the Pride in Edmonton. Yes, but you know who is marching in uh, the Pride in Ottawa? Who? Marcy Ian. Oh, was she? Yes, yes, the minister of uh, uh, I think a uh, diversity and uh, diversity inclusion and uh, gen- yeah, gender equality, ge- inclusivity, and I never remember the titles. <laughs> There's a lot to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I saw her uh, looking fabulous, wearing a beautiful blue dress, uh, and uh, marching uh, with uh, with uh, the liberal contingent. Uh, and then there was uh, lots of um, public service uh, contingents in the mm-hmm. parade. Uh, and interesting, uh, actually, uh, I remember there was a collection of all uh, a whole collection of European embassies. Oh, I didn't notice that. So there were people from the embassy of Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and oh, wow. just marching as a group that, that came out, which was like really interesting as well. Well, there was I like that. Know, ten ten thousand people in the parade. So, yeah, you no, know, because the first time I've ever seen that was when uh, my beaver sweetie and I went to a, a pride in Romania about uh, eight or nine years ago. And there, uh, at that time, it was like when I went to my first Pride when I was 16, there were people there that were willing to march but just did not want to be caught on camera at all. At all, at all, at all. Mm -hmm. So we were there and it was like, well, you speak Romanian and we live in Canada, so we got nothing to lose. So it's like, so we just give every single interview (laughs) that we could. You know, and they're talking about marriage. Yeah, it's, it's just normal. (laughs) <laughs> we're just talking about it's not really where no it's just normal <laughs> it's, so we were sort of like those kids in those uh videos where the so are they really teaching you about like changing your gender and like no, no that's not it's happening. not Why happening. Are you asking me these weird questions <laughs> that's why are you being weird that's no that's not happening mm. bizarre yeah. stuff <laughs> right so it was more like yeah we were sort of like just asking those, isn't that strange? Like, no, it's every day. It's like going to get milk. <laughs> so it was really fun to be able to do that. Right? So, um, all right. Um, I think we have a show. Yes, we do. Do we, Mr. We do. Yeah, we do. All right. Uh, kids. Um, maybe a little lighter on the news today, but. Uh, it's okay. I, I was feeling, I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling happy. What can I say? <laughs> Kits, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Kid James is saying, show that tweet, Paul. Which one? I'm not sure which one that is. Uh, sure. And uh, Kit, uh, and James, I, I saw your uh, your thing earlier saying that, uh, that uh, I was uh, great on Casual Friday. Um, well, you were too, so uh, that that was a fun one. I think that was one of our uh, be- one of our better ones. So uh, the one I posted above, he says. Oh, let's see if I can find it. Then hang on. All right. Uh, well, kids. Uh, so uh, thank you for that compliment, my friend, and uh, uh, I loved doing that with you. Um, that, that, that was a really positive experience. Uh, well, kids, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Podcast. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. I know I just said that, but I'm going to take a second stab at it because I kind of face planted on the first one. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So let your peeps know about us because democracy is something that you do. Uh, again, write, write and uh, show up, run for something. Uh, put your body in the game. Ask for a meeting with your MP or your MPP or MLA. Uh, write your local media. Say, what the fuck? Why are you not covering this? Why are you not covering Mike Ronan? Why are you bothering us with Richie Valdez eating lobster when there's 8.3 billion? Like, dudes, smart up. Um, this is Douglas totally not reacting to the news that Trump trial may start a day before Super Tuesday. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I that was a good one. <laughs>
Uh, <clears throat> evil Queen Beaver. <laughs> uh, if you really like this podcast, you can find us on the Cryer Media Network as well as all Beaver Grizzly friendly platforms. Stars and reviews are appreciated. And again, if you're listening to us on Stitcher, you have cuatro días, four days to migrate because that's becoming a dead app. We love to hear from you. Reach us on our Facebook at True North Eager Beaver, our Twitter feed at, at True Eager, or by email via True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com. <laughs> Mr. Nick, I love that deep laugh, Douglas does. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to make sure that we come gaily forward to you uh, when we have a show, because we don't do, well, Mr. Grizzly does the straight stuff here. But um, then you go to our pod page site, the pod page sponsored by the Ray Girl, uh, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with I in between each one of those words. And when we have a fresh podcast for you, you get it. So that way you don't miss a thing. Because seriously, what's a weekday without beaver and grizzly? Well, this is a thing, right? It's just not complete. Just like our day is not complete without the damn fam. It's, it's is it codependence? Maybe a little bit. Is it symbiotic? I don't know. That's but it point. works for me, so I'm sticking with it. All right. Why not also subscribe to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube channel that helps us out big time? Make like it lame and smash those buttons. There you go. Have beyond awesome day, everyone. Remember to smash the button before you leave, says Kit Elaine. So, we of course we must all obey Kit Elaine. Just just as a uh, footnote, about just as a, a footnote. Sixty four percent of listeners are on uh, Apple Podcasts. Um, I don't have any stat for Stitcher, so I think we're okay. I think everybody's migrated. Okay, great. And uh, it, the, for those of you who are listening on Apple Podcasts. Uh, I learned uh, yesterday uh, through another show that apparently uh, liking the episodes on uh, Apple Podcast and reviews and stars and stuff like that actually really help with the charting. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, absolutely really help. Apparently, there's um, things are weighted more for those types of things. So if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, I guess, and if you're able to uh, you know, give um, stars, uh, or whatever it is, or likes to whatever episodes, the more episodes you can, apparently the more it helps. Um, so there you go. Um, I looked at our global reach, can't... so we've got people listening in Italy, India, the UK, Thailand, Oman, Australia, Ireland, and Uruguay. Oman? Oman, yeah. Marhaba. Uh, well. <laughs> hey, we got a global reach. Hey, hey, that that's really cool. Yeah. I like it, I like it. Um, so uh, like, subscribe, share, not all makes us happy. Somehow you are number 32 in Italy, yeah. Black Belt. So yeah, there must be somebody in Italy that really likes writer media stuff because, yeah, I know. It's, it, it's, it's, hey, I'm not complaining. Well, maybe they're I'm not complaining. Maybe it's somebody, you know, maybe somebody's just looking for a North American insight but doesn't want to get it from our neighbors. Possibly. Mm -hmm, you know? Possibly. Or maybe there's just a lot of expats that then yeah. somebody's really well connected. Could be that too. I said, I said, hey, <laughs> I thought it was all my mom toys. <laughs> Shit. Oh. <laughs> maybe it's the last name. Yeah, could be. Yeah, definitely. Could be. Yeah. You never know. For us, though, we don't have that, though. No. I'm not sure that there's a big beaver population. Unless I put an E on the end of my surname. <laughs> Atkinsone. <laughs> <laughs> At Consone. I don't think that <laughs> It's still super waspy. Yeah. Racist. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty as charged. Everyone's a little bit racist sometimes. Um, we can't do this without your kind and generous support. So if you feel that we've done a particularly good show, if you're watching, you can scan the QR code on the top left to find our coffee, hot chocolate, Guinness, and Caesar fund otherwise known as the eager beaver lodge emergency hydration fund yes fbi 
<laughs> okay, people. <laughs> In the chat there. <laughs> you're being you're being one wonderfully well behaved. <laughs> if you're listening, then let if you're listening, let your fingers do the walking to coffee ko fi.com slash eager beaver to make your donation. And if you're watching, well, you can uh, use your phone to scan that little squiggly by Mr. Grizzly's head and uh that's where you can make your contribution uh, to make sure that we can uh, keep our staff happy. I, I'm staff. Yeah. The, 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 I, gee, I can't do this reverse stuff. Whatever. <laughs> Frame stuff. Whatever. This guy. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I am directionally challenged, which is weird for a dancer. Uh, all right, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, until next time, I swear to God, whenever they started facing us, mm-hmm. I always do the same arm on the side, and then they turn around, and then I have the wrong arm. It's like, why do you keep on doing this? Just dance back to us <laughs> <laughs> so I know which way to go. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Uh, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, until next time, dear kids, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom for us before we go? <sighs> yeah, try try and find something positive today because I'm really reaching for it because uh, I, I, I'm not feeling great physically and emotionally. Mm. Uh, it, it, it takes its toll at the same time. So try and find something positive in your day and focus on that. That'll help get through, get you through it. So. That's about all I got today. All right. I'm giving you lots of love and I'm sending you lots of energy. Thanks, brother. Boom. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, roll them credits, please. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Um, a little uh, shout out uh, to the members of the Niska Nation uh, in British Columbia who are um, currently in Scotland uh, because there's an 11 meter totem pole that had been uh, removed from their land by Marius Barbeau way back in the mm-hmm. day and sold to the Scottish uh, National Museum. And it is about to board a uh, Canadian Armed Forces uh, plane, I believe it is, uh, to be flown back uh, to terrorist British Columbia, where it will be uh, met with celebrations and a feast before returning to the Niska Museum, uh, where it should have uh, been all along. Mm. I have a little footnote, so, uh, uh, a little footnote for you. Um, you know, informing everybody that uh, voting, upvoting on Apple, uh, Apple Podcast, uh, changes the, the the metrics for us. That also means the haters who are hate watching us are going to downvote us. So, if you, if you want to keep us on the charts, you got to upvote us. <laughs> got to upvote us. Got to upvote. All right, vote, vote. <laughs> See ya. All right, kids. Mwah.